Hi, I'm Sandy from Lightning Tools, and I'm here again with Brett. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well, Sandy. Yeah, not bad at all. How are you? Great. Very good, thanks. Very good. <laughs> good, good. So you're still up in the northeast? Yes, yes. Still in Vermont. Still cold. <laughs> but uh, we're heading back to Florida this weekend, so looking forward to some warmer weather. I mean, it's been cool down there, but cool there is like low in 40 at night, whereas <laughs> cool here is low in single digits. <laughs> I did see uh, a mutual friend of ours on, uh, on on Facebook basically post a picture of himself in it, what looks like a T-shirt with a woolly hat on saying how <laughs> cold it is where he is. And I think right. he lives in San Diego, California. It's like, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, how do you people um, up right. north think about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You haven't seen cold. <laughs> Yeah, we're uh, we're actually back to a cold spell here as well. We've had uh -oh. some some temperatures in the um, teens, uh, mm -hmm. talking Celsius, uh, right, right. for uh, for the last ten days or so, I would mm -hmm. imagine. Um, but uh, yeah, we're back to below freezing again. So uh, mm -hmm. it hasn't actually got above freezing today. Um, mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, there we go. It's mm -hmm. uh, pretty cold. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have you had any snow? No, no, we had it forecast, and then the weatherman decided that. Oh. We weren't going to have it after all. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, it looks like clear, sunny skies for the next four or five days mm. with freezing temperatures. So uh -huh. that's that's better than rain and wind that we've yeah. had for the last ten days. So that's yeah, all good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had a few inches of snow over the weekend, which was fun to play with the kids in. Mm -hmm. I bet. Yeah, my kids mm. are eager for that to happen. <laughs> but, uh, wonderful. So. Um, yeah, last uh, last time we we talked about the data viewer and uh, we we discussed um, basically some of the different uh, use cases that we'll, we'll just have a quick recap on, mm -hmm. uh, so everybody knows uh, yeah what we're we're talking about here in terms of the data viewer. But it is data viewer month here at Lightning Tools, um, so uh, we're giving some love to that product mm -hmm. and um, we've got a webinar uh, which is taking place next Thursday. So if you want to register again. Uh, yeah, register and you'll be the first to know when the recording is available. So you can get to lightningtools.com, uh, click onto webinars, which is the best mm -hmm. bet, or further down the homepage, you'll see the ability to uh, to register for that event. Um, so yeah, the, the data viewer is basically a product. It um, is, is a web part that you can add uh, into a modern responsive SharePoint page, or you can also add it as a Teams uh, channel tab as well as a, as a st standalone web part. What works really good though is actually to embed a page on mm. the Teams tab so that you've actually got numerous uh, instances of that web part to build, mm -hmm. build out a dashboard effectively. Um, so of course you could provide that dashboard inside of SharePoint or inside of Teams and um, create some visualizations on data that might be stored inside of SharePoint lists or also externally to SharePoint as well. So um, things like data inside of SQL Azure, or mm -hmm. um, maybe you've got uh, data in uh, an Excel document, or there's a, an OData source. And by OData, what I mean is um, you, you may have your on-premises data, so it could be Oracle or, or whatever, and you've basically exposed that data via an OData service. So it's like a REST service that you can connect to and, uh, and display that data as well inside the web part. Mm -hmm. um, so it's something that's uh, quick and easy to to, to get to grips with. Um, it's yeah, really useful just as a, a contextual web part that you can either display data in a grid format or you can also display data inside a chart format. So there's various different types of charts that we can get into um, and also that grid view, which if you think of a SharePoint list and the type of view that you've got with rows and columns, we're talking pretty much about that. So you mm -hmm. can decide what columns you want to display what order you want those columns in, how you want to group by them. Uh, you can add formatting to them and, and so on. And you can also connect them together for um, multiple different scenarios. So master detail uh, or uh, summary detail rather, or you could also have like one to many uh, relationships reflected inside those web parts too. Um, so, uh, so yeah, the connections are, are really powerful from uh, from that perspective. So so that's basically what the data viewer is. And just to sort of position it, because there's um, several things inside of SharePoint that it, I guess, more directly competes with. Uh, mm -hmm. But there is also um, Power BI as well, which a lot of people try to compare it with. Um, so talking of um, you know, the, the out of the box uh, components, back in the day, we did actually have Excel services and, and so on, which would, of course, display the Excel documents that that has been deprecated that is no longer um, 
likewise, you uh, you also had um, business connectivity services, which does still actually exist, um, but you had some BDC web parts and they're very much classic. And, and you also had an external list, which looks classic too. Um, so you could use those, but it's a shame to use those when you've got a nice responsive modern SharePoint site uh, and you want to keep that responsive look and feel and that modern look and feel when you're, you're seeing external data. Mm -hmm. So they were sort of um, competing for displaying data. Um, as far as BCS is concerned, the data viewer can actually consume an external content type. So you can, if you if you have used BCS and you want to have that modern experience, you can just reuse your external content type that BCS created and display that data uh, using that. So that could come again from, from OData, from SQL Azure or something along those lines. Um, and then there's also the chart web part that you get out of the box with SharePoint Online, okay. which yeah, um, is, mm -hmm. yeah, quick chart. It's, it, it's basically static though. So mm -hmm. uh, if you wanted to, I don't know, put this month's sales revenue on there or something like that, you key in what the sales revenue was mm -hmm. and you may have previous month's sales revenue and that's it. It's not going to change unless you go through and manually update the mm -hmm. data uh, be behind that quick chart. Um, you can collect, connect it to a SharePoint list uh, now. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. You didn't used to be able to when it okay. first came out. It was completely static, but yeah. it's still pretty limited as to um, in what way exactly you can connect to that SharePoint list. I missed the updates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, great to know. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the um, data viewer. Uh, yeah, you you can basically therefore you know display the data inside a grid format, or you can also display it inside a chart format, and it maintains a dynamic connection mm -hmm. to whatever data source you you have it point to. Um, so uh, so that's really the benefit of it. And when we are comparing it to Power BI, because um, that does come up, you know, it it's not going to replace Power BI in terms of functionality at all. Right, and I think right. we mentioned that on the on the last week's show. Uh, there's a lot that you can do with with Power BI, obviously. But there is a learning curve, and sometimes that might actually be overkill. So, mm -hmm. um, where we're positioning this product is actually very similar to where you used to position the uh, data viewer back in SharePoint Designer days, where mm -hmm. you know you might just have a use case for your SharePoint team, which may have fifty odd different people that are members of that team, and you want to be able to display a dynamic chart to them or a dynamic data grid coming from external data sources, uh, so you can make better business decisions and so on with inside your your site. And uh, the benefits are you've got unlimited connections. It's, yeah, as, as often as you refresh that page, it's going to refresh that data, or you can have it automatically refresh as well uh, mm -hmm. based on the data source and, and see updates. So, uh, so really, that's the yeah, position of the, the data viewer is to, mm -hmm. to provide that functionality to the end user or, right. or to the site owner so that they can create some visualizations that might be useful uh, for, for their team. So, mm -hmm. so Sandy, do you want yeah. to sort of jump into some more specifics? Because I think we just recapped last <laughs> yep. week's show. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> yeah, I think pretty much. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so when you add a data viewer web part to a modern page, you get to choose what data source you want the data to come from. And so, as Brett mentioned, we've got a number of different ones. So just to look at a couple of them in a little bit more detail, um, maybe the most common one might be just a SharePoint list. And so you can connect it to a single SharePoint list and just which might be, um, it could be a task list. It could be, for example, uh, something from your social squared forums. If you own our social squared web part that has discussion forums, um, you could connect to one of those lists. For example, the forums list and to see, you know, which forums have had the most activity or have the most posts in them, that sort of thing. So you can create dashboards based on that. Uh, you could connect to SharePoint task lists and show like how, you know, pie chart of how many tasks are high, medium, low priorities. You could connect to a lightning conductor web part, which uh, I mean, that's if you want to connect to multiple SharePoint lists, The mm -hmm. uh, our lightning conductor could aggregate those. And then you could connect a data viewer to those and uh, do some summary functions in a grid if you wanted to, or uh, or create a chart based on what you got from the uh, lightning conductor. So kind of a lot of different options for connecting to SharePoint lists. Actually, I guess in the data viewer, if you wanted to connect to another web part, you have to say other web part. <laughs> but um, that includes, as well as the lightning conductor, we have some free lightning filters web parts. And those two, you could connect to the data viewer. And uh, that lets people filter the, um, the data viewer 
by using, we've got text filters, choice filters, date filters, people filters, various uh, lightning filters. And that also would let you create a nice dashboard where you could have multiple data viewers all connected to the same uh, one or more lightning filters and your people can come onto the page, set the filters once, and then it you know filters the data down through the, uh, the different data viewers. So that's kind of, a lot of the data, where the data sources could come from right within SharePoint. But then, as Brett mentioned, you can connect to a SQL Azure database. Because we're talking SharePoint online, it, the other the data sources need to be online as well. But uh, if you connect to a SQL Azure database, we actually have um, create, update, delete functionality with that connection. So you could choose or not to allow users to, um, in your grid view, that's showing data based on SQL Azure. Um, if you want to allow people to add new records or update or delete records right from the data viewer, you can do that. Um, I think we're in the process of adding that functionality for SharePoint lists as well, but uh, that'll be in a future update. <laughs> um, the OData service, as Brett mentioned, that is a way that you can yourself expose some kind of maybe on-prem data as an OData service, or there are some publicly available OData services if that's the sort of thing that, <laughs> that you want. Um, and any of these, the SharePoint list, the SQL, the OData, um, yeah, if you have a sort of parent-child relationship between some tables or lists, then you can um, one data viewer is being used to filter the results in another data viewer where you have maybe you know an invoices list in one data viewer and an invoice items um, data source in another data viewer you select an invoice and it shows the invoice items related to that invoice so um, you know we used to do that in SharePoint on-prem with um, connected data web parts I think they were called just uh, yeah not BCS but just data the data view. What was that called? Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> but th but there was like a data. There were two different ones. I thought. Uh, I forget anyhow. But yes, you could connect them. Um, and then yeah, as Brett mentioned, you can connect to BCS. So if you uh, that ha hasn't gotten much love from Microsoft in the, the last ten years, maybe. <laughs> but probably is ten years. Yeah, I, th I think from from SharePoint two thousand and thirteen. I think was yeah. the last sort of enhancements yeah. that we saw around business mm -hmm. connectivity services. Yeah. So. yeah, so it is available in SharePoint Online, but I would say I haven't seen all that many people still using BCS once they've moved, kind of moved to SharePoint Online. But it is available there, and you can connect to then other and. Part of the reason is that there too, it has to be an online data source, if I'm not mistaken, uh, because you're, when you're using it in SharePoint Online. Yeah, and, and obviously um, with, um, it, it, it can be SQL Azure or it can be OData. Um, mm -hmm. And you know that, that doesn't cancel out the on-premises data. It just means that mm -hmm. either you're, you're syncing that um, mm -hmm. with uh, SQL Azure or you're also exposing the data via a service, mm -hmm. uh, such as an OData REST service. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and then I think lastly, um, the current data sources we have would be Excel, and that would be an Excel table that you've, or I mean Excel sheet that has a table in it that you've uploaded to uh, SharePoint, and you can access through the data viewer, you choose which library to look at, and then it'll show you Excel sheets that are available there. Um, and that can be exposed as just the data in a grid, or as with the other ones, it could be a chart that maybe you want to show, you know, a pie chart, bar chart, line chart, area. Those are the, some of the types of charts that we have available, um, which are more than what the uh, SharePoint Quick Chart has available to it. Uh, but you could display any of those and again, have multiple data viewers showing different types of charts that show different things. And you've got all kinds of options on the charting as far as um, colors and labels and legends and um, you know overlaying one with another or grouping data. So for example, if it's date sort of data, you can group by quarter or month um, very easily. Just, so it's just you know clicks of buttons to do that. And um, yeah, I think that's mostly it. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. So 
fantastic product and we, we, we have um so we have a new release uh which uh, we'll be talking about also in in next week's webinar so there's mm -hmm. just a, a few enhancements that we've made and mostly these are to bring it in line with some of the offerings that we have inside the data viewer right. uh sorry inside the lightning connector so we've got right. um for example the uh some of the conditional formatting uh it was offering just four color and background color so now it's uh, offering more of the sort of modern experience sharepoint list mm -hmm. formatting so you have the pills as they're called mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. look like pills that you would take uh, you, you can uh, choose different colors for those for for highlighting um certain uh values of data so using obviously greater than less than operators and so mm -hmm. on uh, so you can highlight some some data based on that doesn't actually require any json uh, to do so you can just configure the rules so unlike a sharepoint list where you um, have some very basic conditional mm -hmm. formatting and anything more advanced you you do with uh, JSON. Um, pretty much you do everything with um, with the data viewer in terms of uh, conditional conditional formatting using a U UI. So mm -hmm. yeah, you can uh, use a different operators. You could have nested conditions and so on in order to be able to highlight that data, which is which is very powerful. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's one of the the enhancements. We've also brought it in line with all of our other products by offering the in context help. So uh, mm -hmm. so this means that um, yeah, you can find your way around the product without having to sort of reach out to our website to to find mm -hmm. content there. And um, lastly, uh, there was just a few things around sort of the data formatting that have been updated as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So so sort of currency formatting and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but we are working on a a bigger release, which is going to be time framed uh, around August and uh, inside that release we're, we're also working on more data sources um, so you, know, you mentioned actually uh, data sources ideally have to be in the cloud and the, the product is built on the SharePoint framework which does bring it with it some limitations as to what we could connect to um, based on, on security but you know, that is moving all the time as well so every quarter or so there's a new version of the SharePoint framework um, so we're hoping that um, by August, we're able to connect to some additional data sources, and that's being investigated uh, as to what we could connect to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you are using uh, data that's not necessarily inside a, a relational database somewhere, um, or maybe it is something else that's a relational database besides Microsoft, mm -hmm. um, then you know, being able to connect to that, um, or also being able to connect to um, some more specific systems, so maybe CRM systems or something, we, we could maybe uh, connect to those as well. So that's under sort of research at the moment right, right. Uh, to, to see what we can connect to. And um, we're also working on some additional uh, charting. Uh, so we have modern responsive charts and so on. We're just trying to make those more powerful uh, in terms of you know, drill downs and different chart offerings and so mm -hmm. on too. Um, so, uh, so that's the, the sort of main piece of work that we'll be doing this year on the data viewer uh, to uh, yeah, hopefully uh, enhance that uh, based on mm -hmm. feedback that we get from our clients. Yep. So. yep. Yeah, so that's why it's kind of a ways out there because you know, we've got some work to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it, it's very much the, um, uh, I, I, I guess it's the, uh, the, 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 the it is such a fantastic product that mm -hmm. uh, people don't, you know, really appreciate it. They're maybe mm -hmm. not, um, seen it in action they just mm -hmm. go by the description of it so yeah if you haven't checked out the data view i really mm -hmm. would it's uh, it's a really powerful tool and yep. uh, and hopefully prove useful so exactly mm -hmm. excellent great um so well uh good to catch up again sandy yep. um and uh yeah i guess uh, next week uh we'll be starting to uh or the next episode we'll be talking about the new um uh, could so uh, enhancement mm, where right. we can actually work with with lightning forms mm, yeah, um, yeah. And, and take info path documents into a lightning form so that'd be awesome yeah very exciting about that <laughs> great all right well uh, enjoy the rest of your freezing weather i'll enjoy mine <laughs> and uh, right. safe trip back down to florida <laughs> uh thank you all right all right take i'll care. talk to you next time bye Woody. bye